the Kentucky State Penitentiary, also known as the Castle on the Cumberland, right? Because it's on the Cumberland River, and it was built like a castle. So the Castle on the Cumberland is the Kentucky State Penitentiary. It's a maximum security and supermax prison with a capacity for 856 prisoners located in Eddyville, Kentucky, in Lyon County. And Eddyville is a fourth-class city, and it is the capital of Lyon County. Okay, so L-Y-O-N County on Lake Barkley on the Cumberland River. So the Kentucky State Penitentiary is on Lake Barley on the uh, Cumberland River, about three miles, 4.8 kilometers from downtown Eddyville. It's managed by the Kentucky Department of Corrections. It was completed in 1886. It was Kentucky's oldest prison and only state-owned facility with supermax units. The penitentiary houses Kentucky's male death row inmates and it's the state's execution facility. So if they're going to electrocute you or put you down, they're going to inject you with lethal injection. It's going to happen in Eddyville, Kentucky at the Kentucky State Pen, the penitentiary, right? In the Kentucky State Pen Penitentiary. As of 2012, it had approximately 350 staff members and an annual operating budget of $16 million. In most cases, inmates are not sent directly to the penitentiary after sentencing but are sent there because of violent or disruptive behavior committed in other less secure correctional facilities in the state. Former Confederate State Brigadier General and Eddyville native Highland Benton Lyon, the fucking piece of shit, right? Former Confederate was the moving force. He was the driving force behind the whole entire Kentucky State Branch Penitentiary. Penitentiary, okay? The Kentucky State Branch Penitentiary was put there because of Highland Benton Lion and is located in Old Eddyville because of that fucking Confederate Highland Benton Lion. A hill overlooking the Cumberland River was chosen as the site for the new prison. Construction of the Kentucky State Branch Penitentiary began in 1884 using massive granite blocks cored from a site down the Cumberland. Italian stone masons were recruited to erect the original buildings which resemble medieval castles. The prison officially opened in 1889. It's the second prison built in the state, the first being the Kentucky State Prison in Frankfurt, which was opened in 1798. When the Kentucky State Penitentiary was built, the Kentucky State Prison was renamed the Kentucky State Reformatory. The founding before the penitentiary was built, prison life in Kentucky was horrific. In 1875, studies showed that 70% of the inmates in Kentucky State Prison had pneumonia and 75% had scurvy. The prison was a place of slime covered walls, open sewage, and graveyard coughs. Approximately 70 of the 1,000 prisoners died. In 1875, prison life was something that Kentucky officials had never really focused on until Governor Luke P. Blackburn was elected governor in 1879 and immediately got the legislation to approve of a new prison. 1889 and 1908, by 1889, the penitentiary, uh, the penitentiary was overcrowded. The penitentiary, right? The General Assembly allowed some inmates to work outside of the prison walls, sometimes even unsupervised. Eventually they undid this law, right, because there was nobody supervising the handling of the prisoners. 1909 to 1987, in 1909 a law was created so that the inmates were no longer required to wear stripes. Inmates would wear baggy denim pants and jackets. Um, they also had to stencil their name on their backs. Even though they had some freedom when it came to their dress code, the ball and chain would still be used as a punishment for prison offenders until 1940. And then in the 1940s, eventually the Kentucky State Penitentiary started to get rid of all their convicts who were under the age of 18 years old. So if you was a child, they released you in the 1940s to not allow you to be 
um, imprisoned while you're just still a baby. Most of them were sent to the reformatory where they probably got raped repeatedly like Charlie Manson. The main issue with the Kentucky State Penitentiary in this period was the correctional officer force, always low in numbers and low paid. On June 17, 1988, eight convicts, three being murderers on death row, escaped from the Kentucky State Penitentiary. Uh, penitentiary. Eight convicts, three being murderers, escaped on June 17, 1988. This occurred about 2 a.m., sneaking around the fire set by other inmates. The inmates saw through the cell bars, walked through the cell house doors, and climbed approximately 30 feet to a window using an electrical extension cord. On July 1, 1997, Kentucky executed its first inmate in 35 years. Harold McQueen, 44 years old, was convicted in 1981 of murdering Rebecca O'Hearn, a convenience store clerk, during a robbery that netted him $1,500. Harold McQueen was electrocuted at 12.07 a.m. Over 100 death penalty opponents and 25 supporters of capital punishment protested outside the penitentiary. On November 21, 2008, death row inmate Marco Chapman, Marco Allen Chapman, who is from Gallatin County, the smallest county in the state of Kentucky, he grew up in West Virginia, but for the last 10 years or so, when this murder went down in 2008, over six years ago, he was living in Gallatin County, and the crime where he killed those two children also happened in Gallatin County. Uh, he was justifiably executed by lethal injection, the most recent at Kentucky State Penitentiary. Justice is an eye for an eye. Five distinct custody levels make up the population of Eddyville. The general population wears khaki while protective custody inmates wear Kelly Green. Inmates housed in the administrative segregation units wear canary yellow while the death row inmates wear bright scarlet red. There's also a small group of minimum security inmates who wear dark green. These inmates are allowed to live outside the walls of the institution and have work assignments on the grounds. In addition, these inmates are given additional privileges, including fishing in Lake, Lake Barkley in their spare time. There was one gentleman who had ran out of a Kentucky prison, but went back um, because it was too cold. And this just happened, you know, just recently. So, Kentucky inmate opts for the big house over the big chill. This is on NBCNews.com. So January 7th, 2014, it's about three months ago. This comes from the Department of Corrections. All right, Tuesday, January 7th. Um, Robert Vick, who authorities say escaped from a minimum security prison in Kentucky for a short time. There's no escape in the polar vortex, not even for an escaped prisoner. A Kentucky inmate managed to get out of a minimum security prison on Sunday and turned himself in the next day at a motel a few miles later explaining that he wanted to get out of the frigid air. It was 3 degrees in Lexington with a wind chill of 17 below. When Robert Vick turned himself in at the Sunset Motel and Restaurant, Maurice King, the manager of the 25-room motel, told NBC News that Vic definitely looked like he had enough. He was totally frozen, King said. He walked in, knocked on my door, told me to call the law on him. The manager called the authorities. I don't think they believed me. I had to call again. Vic, 42, was serving six years at Blackburn Correctional Complex for burglary and possession of a forged instrument. He was due to go before... A parole board in less than two months, said Lisa Lamb, a state correction spokeswoman. The escapee was wearing a light prison issue jacket when he turned up, the manager said, and explained that he had spent the night at an abandoned house down the road. The fire department treated Vic for hypothermia and returned him to prison, King said. He would be prosecuted for escape and could have five years added to his sentence, Lamb said. He won't come back ineligible to be at a minimum security prison, she said. He'll have to serve it behind a fence. Kentucky prison convict on the run turned himself in to escape the brutal cold. W. Lexus Hannah Murdo reports. 
So that sucks. You know, he basically turned himself back in and did the right thing. And now they're saying they're going to attack five years on. If anything, they showed that there's a breach of security that you are able to escape. How is he able to escape? How was he able to get away? And he, re he turned himself in. No crime. No thing should be tried. In fact, the idea of them actually trying any fucking prison inmate is ridiculous. The oppression is unbearable. How the fuck can anybody be in prison and not fucking, you know, yell at those goddamn jailers who's raping everybody or allowing fuckers to be raped like they did in Grand County? Um, so, yeah, this gentleman was able to escape, but because of the polar vortex and global warming, it was too cold for him and he returned, he, he turned himself back in. Um... This, this makes me think of North Point riots, how they're sort of charging people, because at North Point, there was, you know, just about 100 or 200 randomly selected people who got in trouble for that shit, and it was only a small group of folks who had initiated it. What are you supposed to do when a, you know, full-blown fucking, you know, riot is on? You're just supposed to sit back and say, not say shit, or you want to be a snitch and then get fucked up later on? You know what I mean? It, it pretty much in a hard situation. And where is your heart? Where should your heart be? Is it for the freedom of everybody? Should everybody be treating us, you know, with shitty ass food and on, on lockdown, martial law lockdown every goddamn day? You know, plus all the fucking prison rapes, right? For non-violent offenders. Here's a non-violent pothead. Let's send this motherfucker into fucking prison so he can get fucking raped by all these goddamn murderers, rapists, fucking, you know, enslaving, warmongering, fucking international bankers, piece of shit, right? So, that makes absolutely no sense. The punishment doesn't fit the crime. In fact, it very much seems that society is a very cold, cruel, fucking shitty, shitty fucking place. This is where they want to send you because they want you to be their slave. They want you to be their slave, so they're going to send you to prison. And then the 13th Amendment doesn't apply because once they put that criminal charge on you and put you in jail... They can make you their bitch for the rest of their life. They can rape the fuck out of you, make you their slave, make you go pick up the fucking garbage on the middle of the road, make you do, you know, fucking janitor duties for a quarter a day or 50 cents a day or what the fuck ever a day. Uh, it's a new Jim Crow, but it's also a new Jim Crow that's hitting everybody out here. Not, not just uh, black folks, but everybody. Pick up a crime times. Old, young, white, black homosexual, heterosexual, male, woman, it don't matter. Everybody's getting beat up around here by the police. Everybody's being victimized. Everybody's getting fucking bullshit. You know, over non-violent war on drugs, you're so concerned about me. You're so goddamn concerned about me that you're going to fuck up my life forever. You don't give a shit about me. You're only fucking horny for your fucking power. You just can't wait to put your fucking hands on me. You're just dying to kill me. You're just dying to beat the shit out of me. I just want to live and exist peacefully. I don't know. Watch over at Ukraine. And it seems like Ukraine, the only people that beat the fucking shit out of these cops are fucking Nazis. Or fucking fascists. So perhaps that's what we need to fight fascism with. Fascism. Let's all become citizen vigilantes. And if we see anybody, including a police officer, commit a felony, such as beat somebody up or assault some innocent person, we need to citizens arrest them. It's legal, it's allowed, and frankly, it's warranted and needed. Sick and tired of these goddamn criminals fucking getting away with their fucking bullshit. All they give a shit about is someone disrespect him. How you dare you disrespect me? Fuck you, you bitch. You didn't fucking catch the criminals. You never fucking catch the criminals. All you are is a big fucking bully in gang. That's all you are. I'll never call the fucking police for any fucking reason. They don't provide any type of protection. They don't get the people that fuck you over. All they will do is fuck you over. They are shitty fucking people. I would be safer without any police officers on the street. 
That'd be way safer without any police officers on the street. Instead of looking over my shoulder for any fucking criminal out here that might be fucking with me, now I gotta look over my shoulder for the fucking police who are just as thick as thieves. You know, you attack one, you attack them all, and that's just gang mentality. They don't care about what's right, what's wrong. They don't care about goodness. They don't care about, you know, what's ethical. They don't give a shit about morality. They barely know the fucking law. So instead of looking out for one or two or three gangs over my shoulder because the police are in existence, I have to look over my shoulder for another gang and they're not protecting me. You know, the Ku Klux Klan even defended white women, so I wonder if all this is just over the protection of white women. Or, I don't know, maybe just men are fucking shitty fucking people, just a bunch of bloodthirsty psychopaths looking to get their sadistic fucking... Jollies off on hurting people that didn't hurt anybody else, non-violent offenders.